Hello, Linda Lyons. This is Mrs. Warren with the Linda School Library. And today I'd like to read to you a story about Johnny Appleseed. This is a tall tale retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Let's read about the origins and life of Johnny Appleseed. John Chapman, who later became known as Johnny Appleseed, was born on September 26, 1774, when the apples on the trees surrounding his home in Leominster, Massachusetts, were as red as the autumn leaves. John's first years were hard. His father left the family to fight in the Revolutionary War, and his mother and his baby brother both died before his second birthday. Rough start. By the time John turned six, his father had remarried and settled in Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Within a decade, their little house was overflowing with ten more children. All brothers and sisters running around everywhere in the, in the house. Nearby was an apple orchard. Like most early American families, the Chapmans picked their apples in the fall, stored them in the cellar for winter eating, and used them to make sauces, cider, vinegar, and apple butter. John loved to watch the spring blossoms slowly turn into the glowing fruit of autumn. Watching the apples grow inspired in John a love of all of nature. He often escaped from his boisterous household to the tranquil woods. The animals sensed his gentleness and trusted him. So remember, there's ten other kids running around in his house. It's so loud. He likes to escape to the quiet of the forest. As soon as John was old enough to leave home, he set out to explore the vast wilderness to the west. When he reached the Allegheny Mountains, he cleared a plot of land and planted a small orchard with the pouch of apple seeds he carried with him. So he brought a taste of home. John walked hundreds of miles through the Pennsylvania forest, living like the Indians he befriended on the trail. As he traveled, he cleared the land for many more orchards. He was sure the pioneer families would be arriving before long, and he looked forward to supplying them with apple trees. He's thinking ahead. When a storm struck, he found shelter in a hollow log or built a lean-to. On clear nights, he stretched out under the stars. So we can see in a clear night, he's out under the stars. In the snow, he's in a lean-to to protect him from the elements of the weather. Over the next few years, John continued to visit and care for his new orchards. The winters slowed him down, but he survived happily on a diet of butternuts. One spring, he met a band of men who boasted that they could lick their weight in wildcats. Not actually lick, they're saying they can defeat them, they can hunt them down. They were amazed to hear that John wouldn't hurt an animal and had no use for a gun. They challenged John to compete at wrestling, the favorite frontier sport. He suggested a more practical contest, a tree chopping match. The woodsmen eagerly agreed. Look at them all go. Everybody's chopping down trees left and right. That is quite the competition. When the sawdust settled, there was no question about who had come out on top. They're all lying down, tired, and John's still standing up, ready to go. John was pleased that the land for his largest orchard had been so quickly cleared. He thanked the exhausted woodsmen for their help and began planting. So his reason for challenging them to a wood chopping contest is he needed to clear a whole bunch of land to plant a new orchard, and they helped. During the next few years, John continued to move westward. Whenever he ran out of apple seeds, he hiked to the eastern cider presses to quickly replenish his supply. Before long, John's planting were spread across the state of Ohio. Meanwhile, pioneer families were arriving in search of homesteads and, and farmland. John had located his orchards on the routes he thought they'd be traveling. As he had hoped, the settlers were eager to buy his young trees. Quite the businessman. And if you look down here, 
he has all of these young trees prepared in burlap sacks for people to take along with them and plant when they find their own land. John went out of his way to lend a helping hand to his new neighbors. Often he would give his trees away. People affectionately called him Johnny Appleseed, and he began using that name. He particularly enjoyed entertaining children with tales of his wilderness, excuse me, wilderness adventures and stories from the Bible. Everybody's gathered around him here. Even the plants, even, excuse me, even the pets. In 1812, the British incited the Indians to join them in another war against the Americans. The settlers feared that Ohio would be invaded from Lake Erie. It grieved Johnny that his friends were fighting each other, but when he saw the smoke of burning cabins, he ran through the night, shouting a warning cry at every door. After the war, people urged Johnny to build a house and settle down. He replied that he lived like a king in his wilderness home, and he returned to the forest he loved. During his long absences, folks enjoyed sharing their recollections of Johnny. They retold his stories, and sometimes they even exaggerated them a bit. Which means they probably exaggerated them a lot. I mean, look at here. They show a picture of him handing over an apple bigger than a person to an old woman. Or this old woman down here. Some recall Johnny sleeping in a treetop hammock and chatting with the birds. Others remembered that a rattlesnake had attacked his foot. Fortunately, Johnny's feet were as tough as elephant's hide, so the fangs didn't penetrate. So now they're just making stuff up. It was said that Johnny had once tended a wounded wolf and kept him for a pet. An old hunter swore he'd seen Johnny frolicking with a bear family. The storytellers outdid each other with tall tales about his feats of survival in the untamed wilderness. So now they're just showing pictures. They say he survived a mountain lion. He watched lightning strike a tree. He was picked up by a giant eagle. He fought off some creature with a giant apple. Running through the ice over a river. His, folk, his boat got caught in the mouth of a gigantic bass. All of these stories that people seem to remember or have heard. As the years passed, Ohio became too crowded for Johnny. He moved to the wilds of Indiana, where he continued to clear land for his orchards. When the settlers began arriving, Johnny recognized some of the children who had listened to his stories. Now they had children of their own. You can see Johnny starting to grow a beard, getting older. It made Johnny's old heart glad when they welcomed him as a beloved friend and asked to hear his tales again. When Johnny passed 70, it became difficult for him to keep up with his work. Then in the March of 1845, while trudging through a snowstorm near Fort Wayne, Indiana, he became ill for the first time in his life. Johnny asked for shelter in a settler's cabin, and a few days later, he died there. Curiously, Johnny's stories continued to move westward without him. Folks maintained that they'd seen him in Illinois, or that he'd greeted them in Missouri, Arkansas, or Texas. Others were certain that he'd planted trees in the slopes of the Rocky Mountains or in California's distant valleys. Even today, people still claim that they've seen Johnny Appleseed. A bright red apple in the back. So this was a story about the legend of Johnny Appleseed. I hope you guys enjoyed listening. I always enjoy being able to read to you. Have a great day.